Hi, I'm Rachel Carter and I'm the maker of Pilgrim Woman Boston. As part of this project, I sent out over a hundred Lucid weaving kits to uh, ladies living in Lincolnshire and Boston. And inside those kits were lots of colourful threads, uh, a Lucid and instructions on how to have a go at making these beautiful braids. So my aim of this project is to teach you all to weave the square braid on the Lucid and that we gather so many pieces together of community weavings and that will make one large length. I'm going to use that to wrap two bronze figures together and the cords themselves will become bronze and then become part of the sculpture. So this blue one represents how much uh, lucid braid we have. So now I'm going to start binding the sculptures with them. I don't want them tied too tightly, um, but it's a, a reference to them being in bondage to a metal counterpart, uh, being bound to their belief systems, bound together as women, and particularly when they were held in jail for a period of time. So it's trying to add all of these in without Quite, trying to do it quite subtly. So I'm going to take this off, double stick this, wire it together, and then put it back on again. Once you get into the rhythm of, uh, of weaving on a loose it, you can be doing other things. But it's just so portable to be able to weave on. On that, that's all the piece of equipment that you need. Now, I like to work quite high up on the lucet on the tines so I like to create small loops and work right towards the top but you find a method that works for you if you prefer to make larger loops and work lower down on the lucet that's absolutely fine if you're finding that pinching technique of your fingers a little bit too difficult uh, then use something like a crocheting hook or a toothpick or anything to help you just pick that bottom loop and lift it over the time. Historians believe that the Lucid was introduced to England by the Viking settlers. So, you know, that, that gives it a use period of over a thousand years. Uh, it was still in use in Tudor times, which is, you know, things like the fastening on the back of the dress, the cords that close your clothes. Anything where you needed a strong, but slightly stretchy cord and you'd use the loose end. I just really enjoyed the feel of, of the braids and just thought that it, it would work really well as part of a sculpture. 107 lucid kits went out to the community and that kit also included a self-addressed envelope and a special cord and if they wanted to be to take part in the project and have their piece of braid as part of the sculpture they could return that piece of braid in the envelope and then I could cast that in bronze. Well today's the day and I've just received this big parcel um, so let's have a look inside and see what we've got. Wow, look at all of these. I, I'm not going to sit and open all of them on camera, but I'm overwhelmed by the first response. So let's just open one and see what we have. What a beautiful piece of braid. Can you see the square braid of the Lucid? And that's fantastic. So thank you, Carol Parker, for sending me your Lucid braid. Uh, your braid will now become part of Pilgrim Woman Boston. So the cords are some that have been made by the community, which is great that their work will then become part of this sculpture. And you can see the pile of them over there. What I've done is I've measured all of the cords that we've yeah. cast. Uh, I'm, I'm making it the same thickness, so I've 
can see the sort of weight yeah. is correct for the lucid cords, but so that it can be left in place as a guide. It's nice to be able to rework these to kind of to be working on top of the actual sculpture rather than applying this digitally. So it's quite different to how we made Pilgrim Woman um, Doncaster because the community weavings for Pilgrim Woman Doncaster were all added digitally, where these are being added manually, which it just feels good to, to sculpt them on top of the sculpture. It's very different. I'll just hold that with a safety pin. If we need that piece. I'm liking the way that it drapes across the torso and then comes around the back. That's working quite nicely. Yeah, I think I'm happy at that. It's not too much, but it's not loads that it's swamping them. Right, so wherever the cords cross over, so when it's been moved about, they don't fall apart or drop off. So any crossover bits, I'm just gonna put a couple of stitches through just to hold it in place. I'm standing on Boston Marketplace and I've got Rose here who is one of the Pilgrim Women Boston participants. Hi Rose. Hi. How did you find it? I found it great fun and it took me back to my, my childhood when we used to knit on bobbins and wind the wool round and slip it over as we did with the looser weaving and make long doll scarves I think they were. Thank you for coming to see me, Gillian. You're welcome. Your piece of weaving that you sent back to me is going to be part of the sculpture. And how does that feel to know that something that you've made is going to be immortalised in bronze for the town that you live in? Well, it's, it's like a heritage thing, isn't it? You know, kids, grandkids will say, oh, my nan did bit that. And it's, it is, it's is. It's, it's heritage. It is. Yeah, yeah it's something to, you know, pass down through generations. Hi, I'm Julie. Thank you so much uh, for letting me be part of the project, Rachel. It's been absolutely brilliant. I've really enjoyed using the loose set. It, just picking it up is so relaxing. And to think that the braids that we've made are actually going to be used um, to create something for Boston going forward. So not only are we part of the history, we are part of the future. I'm Claire Crossdale and a few weeks ago Rachel Carter, Spirit of Mayflower, sent me a lucid kit. So I had a go and um, loop, turn, pull. <sighs> took a bit of doing to get my head around it but eventually I managed it and um, I've been doing it for quite a few lengths so I'm thinking like shoelaces uh, I was thrilled that uh, I was able to do a bit of loose set weaving that's going to go on the Boston Pilgrim Woman sculpture and um, it helps to make up for Boston trip in the US that I couldn't get to last year when everything got cancelled. Hello my name is Yurate Matulonne I'm working for Boston Lufina community. Yeah, it was a new experience. And we we very happy that we could share and to, and to contribute to this project. We we, we are proud that uh, this our women cause now can can be a part of this local project and most importantly uh, that we could contribute to the town sculpture and this local project. And thank you very much for inviting us and it's awesome uh, to have that feeling of belonging thank you very much okay. so i've put um stitches in where okay. i want to keep things open yeah um so uh, if i put all the cords on here then so you're happy with the uh, the level of that work you've done on the uh, on the girls on the yes room? i think leaving all those flashes 
So I'm just removing the short bits. It's just, um, it just adds to the raggedness, raggedness mm. if that's a word. You know, it's that, that story <laughs> where they've, they've just spent a month in jail, you know, with the yeah. kids and everything, you know. Um, so they are weather worn and worn out. So yeah. it just adds to the story, and I think, yeah, those extra bits. It's like a happy accident. 